All right, moving on. Let's get even deeper into the weeds, shall we? So, I don't know how many of you guys are watching are from the United States, but either way, if you are not, I'm sure you have heard about the Roe vs. Wade uh, being overturned and all the craziness that's involved around that nowadays. So, I just wanted to talk about that for a few minutes, and more so, not really about the uh, Roe vs. Wade uh, being overruled. I didn't really want to get into the weeds on that too much, but because I think a lot of people have a weird idea as to what that being overturned actually means. It does not mean that abortion is all of a sudden illegal, and it does not mean that, you know, women cannot get abortions anymore, all these things. All it means is that the federal government is no longer in charge of saying, like putting the line either way, like if it could be after the first trimester or the heartbeat or whatever, all these different, you know, lines that people draw in the sand as to when it's okay. You know, some people in some states are like, you can get an abortion up to nine months in birth. And some are like, no, you can only, you can't even get it at all. And then there's all the lines in between. And basically overturning Roe v. Wade basically says that the federal government is not in charge of, of placing that line anymore and making those decisions. And it goes back to the states. So if like Portland, Oregon wants to have abortions up to nine months, well, then they can do that. And if Texas wants to have no abortions or, or a heartbeat bill, which is I think what Texas wanted to do was um, once there's a heartbeat, you can't, then Texas can do that. Basically, that's all it's saying is the states get to decide. And it that doesn't mean you can't drive to another state and do what you got to do there. Overturning Roe vs. Wade just means the states get to decide it, not the federal government, which in general, I'm a fan of. Um, so what happened with all that was is there was a leak to Politico. And this document right here is the leak. Now, this leak suggested that the decision was going to be that it was going to be overruled. Anyways, I'm not going to read this whole like leak document. It's in the description. But this is the document here that got leaked that was suggesting uh, it was going to be overturned. Now, that upset a lot of people, right? Because, well, one, the media is hyping it up to be this thing that now it gets overturned. That's 50 years of, of you know, rights being taken away for women and they'll no longer be able to get abortions and it's going to create all these back alley all these bad crazy things that has nothing to do with this law whether or not you want to get one that's fine go there's plenty of places you'll still be able to it's just it's up to the states now but regardless that pissed a lot of people off now what bothered me the most was is we're starting to see protests take place at these judges is uh places of residence and these judges are the ones deciding on this case and whether or not it's going to be overturned. And it really bothered me to find out that people are getting doxxed. Their personal information is getting leaked. They're basically being protested at their private residence, which uh, after looking into is extremely illegal to do. Uh, and so let me, let me find the, uh, the law here. So I just want to, to, to read this to you before I show you some of the other stuff. Basically, you can you have a right to peacefully protest, yada yada, but you cannot do it in at like a, a judge's place or a juror's place in order to influence any sort of decision. That is illegal to do. Uh, and this is the, the actual law for it. So it says, whoever with the intent of interfering with, obstruction, or impeding the administration of justice, or with the intent of influencing any judge, juror, witness, or court officer, in the discharge of his duty, pickets or parades in or near a building housing a court of the United States, or, or <laughs> this is a long run on sense, or in or near a building or residence occupied or used by such a judge, juror, witness, or court officer, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it says you're not allowed, you're not allowed to protest outside of a judge's personal residence to try and get him to, to decide a certain way on a on a, a court case, which is reasonable, okay? However, this is exactly what is happening right now when it comes to this court case. And what bothers me the most is a couple things. One, we saw the same thing happen in Minneapolis when it came to the George Floyd trial. Now, whatever way you think that trial should have went, that's irrelevant. What bothered me the most was watching politicians protest outside of the courthouse and outside of their private residences saying if we don't get the result we want we're gonna riot and we're gonna loot you had 
what was it Maxine Waters out there protesting? She's a, a congresswoman. Well, politics has no place when it comes to these court cases, and like you can't be protesting at at people's houses to try and get them to uh, decide a certain way. Um, when it comes to a uh, like intimidation, you can't intimidate somebody, right? A judge to uh, to make a, a specific decision. So here we have Jen Psaki, right? Okay, this lovely woman, uh, basically saying we encourage it. We encourage it to happen. Let's encourage it. It's, and uh, I'll just play this for you because it speaks for itself. God, this I I can't stand this woman. You guys spent some time yesterday talking about what you think are the extreme wings of the Republican Party. Do you think the progressive activists that are now planning protests outside some of the justices' houses are extreme? Peaceful protest? No, peaceful protest is but not extreme. Some of these justices have young kids. Uh, their neighbors are not all public figures. So but would the president think about waving off yeah. activists that want to go into residential neighborhoods in Virginia and Maryland? Uh, Peter, look, I think our view here is that peaceful protest, there's a long history in the United States and the country of that. And I saw me real quick. Again, it's illegal. Right, and we certainly encourage people to uh, keep it peaceful and not resort to any level of violence. Let me tell you what I was referring to and what the president was referring to yesterday. Not about the yesterday, though, just about moving forward. These activists posted a map with the home addresses of the Supreme Court justices. Is that the kind of thing this president wants? They're posting maps with the, the addresses of the judges and justices. Like that, to me, that's nuts. Like to me, that's, that should be illegal. That's doxing, right? So to try and intimidate, and they do the same thing again in Minneapolis. They try to intimidate to get a certain election or a certain result, right? A certain verdict. And to me, that's just wrong. And if you can start doing stuff like that, you uh, you basically devalue all of our judicial judicial system to help it, your side make their it seems point. really wrong look i think the president's view is that there's a lot of passion a lot of fear uh, a lot of uh sadness from many many people across this country about what they saw in that leaked document uh, we obviously want people's privacy to be respected we want people to protest peacefully if they want to to protest again she's upset about what came out in the leaked document. For one, that document should have never been leaked. The fact that it got leaked and nobody's held accountable for it is crazy. But, you know, it's a. But these, again, these are ongoing court cases. These are very sensitive documents that aren't supposed to be, you know, be getting out to the public. She is not sorry it was leaked. She's not sorry people are committing crimes at these judges and, you know, justices' houses. She's sorry about what the document said, that it might be overruled. And she thinks that people should go out and peacefully protest. Peacefully protesting is still illegal when it comes to doing it in front of a judge's or jurors or you know anybody's house when they're as it relates to a court. That case. is certainly what the president's view would be. So he doesn't care if they're protesting outside the Supreme Court or outside someone's private residence. I, I don't have an official U.S. government position on where people protest. I want it. We, we want it, of course, to be peaceful. And certainly, the president would want people's uh, privacy to be respected. But I think we shouldn't lose the point here. The reason people are protesting is because women across the country. Okay, and this is where she goes on to her whole political opinions on what it means to overturn Roe vs. Wade and yada yada. And that's besides the point. Again, you can think whatever you want about Roe vs. Wade and we can uh, have a conversation about that at a later date. What I'm really bothered by is the fact that people are allowed to do this. And again, it's a crime, but it's not a serious crime. I think it's like a misdemeanor. And I, what is it? Um, but what was the uh, what was the punishment? Shall we find, uh, they can, you can get a fine and you can't be in jail for more than a year. So it's, it's like a misdemeanor, basically. It's a small crime. People should, it's illegal. People should be getting arrested for it. Um, especially because you have a right to peacefully protest, but you don't have the right to do it in a way that intimidates uh, judges, jurors, uh, people who are, are actively participating in, you know, delivery on a case or a court case because you can't, because then, oh, then you have the mob again, right? Then you have literally people going in, breaking fingers and, and intimidating the shit out of people in order to get certain things. That's, that's what happens all over again if you start going down that rabbit hole, right? And so, yes, it's illegal. And it's, you're doxing people's personal information. 
to try and intimidate them to get a certain um, political outcome, which is which is absolutely crazy. Uh, and like, here's another little uh, article that just talks about how federal statute bans picketing judges' residences with the intent of influencing the judge. Um, there's been talk of protests outside Supreme Court justices' homes, but it appears likely that such protests are illegal. And I just under the code that I just showed you. So, again, all this is linked in the description if you want to check it out. I just think it's very sad that you have the you know the press secretary of, press secretary for the president saying, yes, go out there and and commit crimes. Even if you're committing them peacefully, you're still committing a crime because. The, the narrative is more important than the, the people because the people, you know, they're just blindly f following what this this kind of this lady is saying. We don't want to go down that rabbit hole. Right. So I also want to uh, talk about here. This is a little sneak peek as to what it looks like on the streets of these peaceful protests outside of the judges homes. All right. Let's take a look. Uh, this is <laughs> uh, you don't get to take away our bodily autonomy and enjoy your Saturday night at home. You get to do one or the other. And wh what does it mean to you to be marching to the justices' homes? Uh, this is personal, so we're going to take it to the personal space. Oh, God. They Thanks. did this, not us. The Daily Signal news producer and podcast co-host Douglas Blair is following the protest there on the ground, and he joins us now. Good morning to you, Douglas. Good morning, Ainsley. How Good are you morning. doing? Good morning. Doing well. Was that you asking the lady the questions, and what did you see at these protests? I mean, what I saw outside of these justices' homes was nothing short of horrifying. It, it really tells you a lot that we've gotten to the point in this country where protesters feel they can go to somebody's private residence, scream and yell and try to intimidate them into voting the way that they want them to do. And for a cause like abortion, where on the pro-life side, we've acknowledged time and again that this is not just a clump of cells. It's not a parasite, as some of these protests were, portraying, were saying. It is a human being. It is a human life. Did you see a difference when you went to Kavanaugh's house and then went to John Roberts' house? That was the scariest thing to me, that the, the energy, you could just feel it, was palpably different when Kavanaugh came up. They were yelling, they were screaming. And look, I mean, this is an attempt at intimidation. And I think it really says a lot, too, that the Biden administration is willing to absolutely let these justices out to dry. They're not going to say it's not acceptable for you to go to somebody's house and yell and scream. That's not how we do it in this country. So that's that's kind of what we got back to with Jen Psaki is, and again, I'm not really getting into the whole abortion debate today. That's not my point with this. My point is, you have people actively breaking the law, right? As far as protesting, you have the U.S. government, pro like, um, there, or sorry, I should say, you have the U.S. president and his constituents promoting it. You know these these illegal acts. And it's a federal court case that is going on. Like this should not, this should not be allowed. Period. Right. So you have a bunch of emotional people acting emotionally, and they're not using any logic. And you have people encouraging them. It's like, it's like if it just reminds me if somebody was like five years old and they're doing something they're not supposed to do, right? And then you just have their parents encouraging them to do it. Of course, they're going to keep doing it. And that's why I feel like a lot of these people are. Did you say that you saw Kavanaugh? He came out of his house? I did not see Justice Kavanaugh. Um, my hope is that he wasn't home. My hope is that he was safe with his family somewhere else because mm -hmm. it was genuinely one of the scariest things I've ever witnessed, watching these people yell and scream and try and change the vote of what is most possibly the most important vote in the history of this country, the right to you know, live your life and to have a human being survive in the womb. Look at this. They're drawing coat hangers on the streets. I mean, this just says that the. I don't get about this. Nobody uses wire coat hangers anymore. Okay. So what, I, what this whole coat hanger nonsense is just a little bit outdated. All right. Find a better symbol to attach yourself to. I haven't seen a wire coat hanger in fucking 15 years. All right. Have they found out who leaked the document? I'm not sure who leaked the document. I don't think they have. I saw a funny little uh, quote, though. It did say like the. The right is upset that the document was leaked and the left is upset about what the document said in the leak. So <laughs> nobody is really happy about it, but 
Um, let's see what the, how, what the else is abortion would go back to states. States would decide. It doesn't say no more abortions. Right. We had Mark yes. Levin on last week, and he said if you want to get an abortion, you still can. You might have to drive to another state, but you'll still be able to. And according to the New York Post this morning, it says it's illegal to protest at a justice's house if it's to try to influence the outcome. Do you know any more about that? Absolutely. No, I mean, that's entirely right. And it, even if, whether or not it's illegal is sort of irrelevant here. It's the morality of the thing. I think the it's fact that they've decided that it's now acceptable to intimidate a justice into getting what they want just shows how deranged and, and out of touch with the American people mm -hmm. the radical left yeah. is. The fact that we can have this conversation between us and we can discuss, hey, you know, maybe it's going to go back to the States, maybe not. That's acceptable. It's unacceptable to go to somebody's house to yell and to scream and to scare them into submission. Douglas, what did the police say? Because we saw some images that looked like police were on the sidewalk. I, I was, uh, you know, I was confident for a moment that they were going to start arresting people. It seemed like the police had things under control. And I will tell you this, the fact that these radical protesters fled the scene the second that a, a, ma a massive police presence came on was, was so telling to me because they're scared. <laughs> All right. So that's that's pretty much the end of that. The fact that they fled, though, when a bunch of police started showing up. It's kind of is kind of telling, like he said. It is kind of funny, but yeah, that's that's all crazy. It's it's uh it's starting to become an uncertain issue. Like people can just just think that they can do whatever they want, and a, a lot of times the government will just encourage it, even if it's wrong, even if it's illegal, as long as it fits their narrative. And that's that's crazy. And we saw it with a lot of like the riots, with the Black Lives Matter riots, with the Antifa, and a lot of other things. It was the same kind of thing. A lot of just encouragement from certain politicians, even though it's it's illegal and it's you know clearly morally wrong. Uh, so this, I thought this was kind of funny. Um, we'll watch this, and I think this will be it for uh, Jen Stucke. Uh, but this was, I think, uh, a few days later when a reporter asked her about does you know the president plan to condemn um the you know the doxing of these justices because there's now been violence i guess there's been some violence that's happened at some of these peaceful protests uh in front of these ju justices homes that are trying to make a decision on this uh very big c case that's going on right now uh this is what she had to say about it this is now that we've seen violence unfold? Well, I would say that we have been clear, and the president's position has long been, that we should not see protest that takes the form of violence, that takes the form of vandalism. But it does. Um, and that threatens anyone. Um, that has long been his position for his entire uh, career and continues to be his position. Does the president plan to condemn... I just thought it was funny because it's like, reporter, does the president plan to condemn the League of the Supreme Court justice's options or the doxing of the justice's homes now that we've seen violence unfold? Jen's like, nah. <laughs> nah, we ain't condemning anything. All right, that's Miss Sake for you.